Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches and everything you see is for sale. The best way to start your weekend, even if it's just out of curiosity, reach out to me directly about pricing, accessories, extra photos of any watch you see here. Team also with the watchbox.com is me. Also, I need more inventory to do future shows. We are always building inventory. We love to sell watches, but we also love to trade. We love to buy them. We will pay cash. We pay fast. We make the process seamless, easy, point and click. No upper limit on value paid. We will buy your entire collection. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to me. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. Okay. Jumping straight in, a throwback to 2017 that is a throwback to an even earlier era of Omega Seamasters. This is the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean GMT, and it is the big blue. Now, the name is inspired by the 1970 Seamaster 120, reference 166073. That was the deep blue. This is the big blue, and you can see why. It's big and it's blue. 45.5 millimeters in blue ceramic, it is essentially indelible. If you're like me and you cannot stand scratches on watches, you cannot stand that first swirl, that first scuff, ceramic is perfect for you because unless you're the type of person who routinely shatters the sapphire on his watch, you're never going to have a problem with ceramic. It is harder than just about anything bar sapphire or diamond. About 1,200 Vickers, you're not going to get a mark, which is how you know when you buy a ceramic watch pre-owned, it's never been refinished because it doesn't need it. So we have case out of blue ceramic. We have bezel out of blue ceramic. We have dial out of gloss blue ceramic. There it is, zirconium oxide. That is the chemical name of ceramic. Now, one quarter of the bezel inserts it's actually orange rubber. This is a lovely combination of orange and blue. And if you're a Mets fan, you know who you are. This might be the perfect watch for you or a loved one. We have tri-Arabic numerals. We have broad arrow minute and hour hands. We have a second time zone in 24-hour format. Take note, this is still a dive watch because although many GMT watches do include GMT bezels, here we read the 24-hour scale off an inner chaptering and we keep the 120 click dive bezel and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the dark right now let's zoom out a little bit take a quick look this is the big blue in the night take a look at that easy to see two colors of loom green for the bezel pearl in the minute hand so you can easily use its timing function and then we also have luminescent hour second hour and constant seconds. So if you're diving with this watch, you know it's still running in the dark. Plenty of luminescence, no compromise there. And I often find that a dive bezel is more convenient for me, easier to read, and has less downstream maintenance costs than a chronograph. So this watch gives you everything. It's a dive watch. It's a GMT, your travel watch. It's also a timer for anything you need to time, such as the time between innings during a Mets game. Uh, taking a quick look at how everything operates, you can see there's two setting modes. One allows you to basically hack the movement, stop the seconds, move everything in sync. You get the 24-hour hand, one circuit of the dial every day. And then there's another stop where you can adjust your local time. You see I'm able to adjust that while everything else continues in its previous station. It doesn't stop the movement. And I can move the date forward or backwards, depending on which way I'm traveling across the international date line. Lovely strap. The strap's a combination of orange and blue rubber. Here, this is where Omega really sets itself apart from other brands working in ceramic. Swatch Group has the industrial might to make buckles out of ceramic. So, for example, a lot of companies doing ceramic, like Hublot, would give you some sort of PVD titanium for the buckle. Here, the buckle, which is the part most likely to scratch and scuff on your desk, it's just as hardened via ceramic as the case itself. Flip it all over, automatic winding. You can see this watch is a master chronometer, so it's been through the full Meta's whole watch chronometer and durability testing. 600 meter water resistant, virtually amagnetic, no vulnerability to magnetism, two barrels, 60 hour power reserve, full balance bridge, free sprung balance, coaxial escapement, double impulse, direct and indirect with tangential contact, George Daniels' most famous invention, and of course, still the most exotic escapement you can buy for under 50 grand. This watch is probably a little too large for me just in terms of the size, although I'll say if you've never worn ceramic before, it's a lot like titanium, very light. 
So I might actually be able to pull this off as a weekend watch, an adventure watch, a vacation watch, a party watch. Don't write yourself off if your wrist is my size because I actually think this is a pretty good fit. It's not going to fit underneath the cuff by any means, but it does fit. It is comfortable. It does sit. And the ergonomics are quite agreeable. Okay, I didn't plan it this way, but this episode wound up with a bit of a Royal Oak kick. And here's going to be the first of the three. Take a good look. You've probably never seen the Royal Oak Jumbo like this. And rest assured, this is the Royal Oak Jumbo in white gold with 1,102 brilliant cut diamonds. The watch is white gold, 39 millimeters in diameter, 8.3 millimeters thick. This is a real jumbo. This is not a 15400, 15500, 15300, or 15450. It's a 15202. Note the dial. Even the indices are baguette diamonds. We'll do a quick loom shot, although it isn't really that kind of a sports watch. You can see it is loomed. This is one to appreciate in the light where it just explodes pantograph cut petite tapisserie dial and you could see the date disc the same color as the dial so this is an artisanally crafted vintage engine turned dial super slick stuff uh, the watch has just endless diamond paving pave and you could see that it's finished in terms of actual metal finishing to the same standard as any jumbo inside a movement you don't get on the jumbo anymore the old 2121 jlc based beautifully made with bevels second to none you don't find this on other simple audemars piguet watches not anymore i'll actually show you what the new uh, 7121 looks like but you can see based on the old jlc 920 that was made for patek vacheron and ap and only ever used by those three companies the base movement it's only a 2.4 Five millimeters thick, I believe. Super slim, vintagey, 19,800 vibration per hour beat rate, and free sprung with a gyromax style balance. We have this full annular system for winding, so a ring in beryllium that goes all the way around with the mass on one side, and so that allows the mass and the rotor to be cinched very close to the bridges and plates without any danger of actually connecting with them and scratching them, because we have four ruby roller bearings at the four corners that support this full beryllium ring. 40 hour power reserve, automatic winding, and you can see we have things like solarization on the crown wheel core and the ratchet wheel, uh, just beautifully decorated in ways that are rare, exquisite, and slow, which is probably one of the reasons AP no longer puts this movement in the jumbo. And by the way, although the movement was originated by JLC as an abouche, Audemars Piguet completely manufactures and finishes it in-house for this watch. So this watch is all Audemars Piguet. And as a post-2012 model, even the dial is cut on a pantograph in-house at AP. You can also see that AP still puts uh, some sort of platinum family coating on top of its white gold, which is why its white gold watches are indistinguishable visually from platinum. And this thing just weighs a ton, an unbelievable mass in white gold with full bracelet and diamond paving to match. This is for him, this is for her, this is a much more compact fit than the larger Royal Oaks. Now, we had a new Royal Oak Jumbo in uh, 2000 and 22 and it is the 16202 and some things have changed i have opinions about some of those changes and i'm going to be free and open about them i wish we had the old monoblock case that's gone but that's been gone for a while that was gone on the last of the 15202s and also i do miss the older movement that said there are some advantages to the new movement for Example, on the new movement, you get the first ever quick set on a jumbo. So I'm just making sure I'm not in the day change danger zone there. But you can see how in the intermediate position, I now have the ability to quick set the date. That's not something you could do on the old 2121. This is the 7121. Now, when you flip it over, you can see it's also a bigger movement. It just better fills the case back, and it has a much longer power reserve. 40 hours here becomes, let's just zoom in a little bit, 40 hours in the older movement here becomes 55 hours. And you can see that it's got a beautiful symmetry. It's now a full balance bridge. It's still a free sprung balance, but a full balance bridge for better shock tolerance. And that is gonna be quite a bit more shock tolerance also because it's a more modern movement architecture in general. You can see how the separate solid gold bridge for the barrel and the ratchet wheel mirrors the design of the full solid gold bridge for the balance. You have an old pocket watch feature here. See how the hairspring holder, the stud holder itself isn't fixed to the balance bridge. It's fixed adjacent on a separate structure. This is like an old pocket watch. Uh, 
Audemars Piguet once upon a time did this on pocket watches uh, on this side of the Atlantic. I've also seen this type of floating adjacent stud holder on old American E. Howard pocket watches. Now, you can also see that the rotor is hand finished. Satination on the top, mirror beveling on the edge, and then many, many interior angles where those bevels converge in sharp cleft creases. But you won't find that same level of beveling on the bridges. Now, what you do get here is machined beveling that seems to have been finished with a handheld polishing tool. So the rotor is finished to a higher standard than the rest of the movement, but that's not to say the rest of the movement is crude, just that it's not at the level of the old 2121. So what do you get here? Well, you get a larger movement, you get a longer power reserve, you get a quick set, you get better shock resistance, and a more modern architecture overall for improved accuracy and overall durability. So depending on what your priority priorities are, you might find that that is preferable to the old movement, or you might be a retro grouch like me and prefer the 2121 to the 7121. I'll show it to you on the wrist, though, because it wears like a jumbo, that's for sure. 8.1 millimeters thick as I measure it with exquisite hand finishing. All features of the bracelet, which takes about 11 hours to finish, have been beautifully tailored, tapered, satinated, and polished. And then you can see one of the hallmarks of a Royal Oak which is the solid gold, in this case, white gold bezel bolts that sit recessed inside of the octagonal rounded bezel, which was originally inspired by a vintage diving helmet. And then we have the Petite Tapisserie, also cut on a pantograph right here in galvanized blue with matching blue date disc and white gold indices and white gold hands and AP logo to match. This is the latest and greatest jumbo with the newer movement and still quite rare in the pre-owned space. Now, back in 2020, Audemars Piguet launched its first ever titanium perpetual calendar Royal Oak, and that's what we have right here, an 88-piece limited edition in grade 5 titanium for the Chinese market. And we'll get close and take a look. It features an adventuring glass disc for the moon phase and then a photorealistic moon. We have a perpetual calendar that includes a Chinese red pointer style calendar. So it's both a perpetual calendar and it is a weekly indicator. So we have a weekly calendar with the perpetual calendar. See, this isn't actually the date here. It goes up to 52. The date is at three o'clock. So we have the day, the date, the month, the leap year, the week, the moon phase, and then a pantograph cut and I'll show you the difference here. A pantograph cut dial. This is the Grand Tapisserie. It is the larger pantograph cut hobnail. This is the Petit. And both of them are engine turned in contrast to the Mega Tapisserie, which is on the offshore, and that is stamped. Now here the hands, as well as the indices, are white gold. And this being a sporty watch, you can see it is fully loomed. You can see that easily in the dark. On the reverse, we have another take on that older 2121. You can see the movement we discussed earlier in its glory. And it's mechanically identical to the other, albeit with the addition of two jewels and the perpetual calendar module. Now, this is 41 millimeters, so very light in sapphire and titanium, but it does wear quite a bit larger than a jumbo. And I'll show you that to good advantage here. As you can see on my wrist, it really does take up all the real estate. It pushes right out to the edge. I can wear it comfortably, but I think you need a 16 centimeter circumference wrist or larger to wear this 41 millimeter watch. I will say that the box set with this is very very impressive. And this limited edition for the Chinese market included a lovely pair of additional straps, one in black alligator leather and one in red rubber that really pops. So this is a cool watch that comes lavishly equipped with an, a grand boxed set and accessories. Really very special. So from AP and super expensive watches, we talk Grand Seiko and watches that are very special but also more accessible. This is the SBJ 425, a Ginza Japanese home market limited edition, so Japanese domestic market spring drive automatic. Uh, this is the 9R65, and you can see that it includes a 44 GS case in steel, 40 millimeters in diameter, and it has a lush and lovely lion's mane dial. It can be a little bit difficult maybe to see the texturing in my light box, but you can see it's sort of a brushed, rusticated, and roughed uh, pattern underneath the rose gold faceted 
polished and satinated hands and indices. Also, Grand Seiko dial furniture, handmade, hand-placed, and world-class. You could see that this is on par with the quality of a Rolex dial, with the exception that all these parts are shaped, polished, faceted by hand, and then placed and caulked by hand. And you can see that the movement features spring drive signature dial side power reserve, as well as the super smooth stepless sweep of spring drive. No stops, no staggers, no ticks and no tocks. This is a technology that is driven solely by the spring. No motors, no batteries, no capacitors. The main spring turns a unidirectional governing wheel. That governing wheel, which you can see on the reverse of the watch, creates an induced electrical current that activates a quartz timing circuit that in turn uses electromagnetic braking force to slow down the wheel. On one side, the wheel is geared to the barrel, which provides the motive force. On the other side, the wheel is geared to the drivetrain that turns the hands. So all of the energy starts in the spring. All of the motion starts in the spring. It is lifetime serviceable, not just for the lifetime of the owner, but the lifetime of the watch, which may be several generations. It's watchmaker tuned, watchmaker serviced when it goes back. And again, it is a long-term product. Don't think of this as disposable quartz. This is luxury quartz in a form unique to Grand Seiko, as it took from 19 1977 with the first concepts to 2005 to finish automatic winding spring drive. It is a monumental technical achievement, which is why, with the exception of one oddball Piaget, this technology remains exclusive to Grand Seiko and Seiko. And as you can see, it's attractive on the reverse side, mentioning Ginza, which is a chic shopping district in Tokyo, and a limited edition of 250 pieces, all made in Japan and generously water resistant to 100 meters. This can be used as a sports watch. It also features a quick set date and stop seconds. We'll zoom out now, throw it on the wrist. It's an easy watch to wear at 40 millimeters, and the 44 GS case, which dates back to 1967, combination of creases, curves, polished and satinated facets. It's a distinctive design icon of Grand Seiko, uh, one of the most recognizable Grand Seiko case designs. The watch is short across the wrist, and you can really see that. See how the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist? Agreeable enough that I could even recommend ladies try this, especially on a strap. It's going to wear really well on a smaller wrist. On a strap, this thing could probably wear on a 13 and a half centimeter circumference wrist. Very special and also reasonably priced. Oh, by the way, if you want to watch that's handmade, this movement is hand-assembled and hand-tuned. This dial is handcrafted from the parts to the final assembly, and this case is finished using a tin plate polishing method that requires three years to master. So yes, for well under $10,000, you're getting something that is both uniquely Japanese and uniquely handcrafted in its price range. This is one of the coolest watches that I have ever featured on the show. This is the 25-piece limited edition grade 5 titanium Angelus U41 Sports Tourbillon. And this came out back in 2020. There were a couple of different variants of it, each with a different color, each a 25-piece edition. Angelus as a brand is a legacy Swiss brand that was famous for a number of different models and model lines in the 20th century. And it is today owned by the manufacturer La Jupere. Now, La Jupere also has the Arnold & Son brand, which makes about seven 700 watches a year. Angelus makes about one-tenth as many watches as Arnold & Son. This here is 40... 2 millimeters in grade 5 titanium, so lighter than steel, but also more scratch resistant than steel, only 10.2 millimeters thick and 49 millimeters from lug to lug. You can see the case construction is super involved and remarkably intricate. And then we have this wonderfully domed crystal that looks like a vintage plexi with the Angelus logo silk screened on its underside. You can see we have a flying tourbillon, and I'm going to remove this surly our hands so you can more easily appreciate it. Let's take a quick look at the loom because this is a sports watch. Only the hands are loomed, but generously so. Now the movement is entirely open. So we have an open barrel, manual wine, 60 hour power reserve, and then you can trace the train all the way down to the tourbillon regulator itself. And it's a flying tourbillon because there's no upper bridge to block your view of the tourbillon. That's what a flying tourbillon is. It was invented by Alfred Helwig in East German watchmaking back in the 1920s, 1923, I think. Easy to see how the watch operates. You have the motion works at center, 
with the minute wheel sitting underneath the hour wheel, the cannon pinion bearing the minute wheel, and then the hour wheel bearing the hour hand and the minute wheel pinion driving the hour wheel. We've got the keyless works here, which is the clutch system that allows you to wind and set. You see now I have put the crown wheel in contact with the first intermediate wheel for setting. And you can see how the clutch and the clutch spring along with the sliding pinion uh, will allow you to select which function is currently operative. So I might be setting or if I move the clutch back. Now the winding pinion is acting on that mainspring and that mainspring becomes more and more tightly coiled as I wind the watch. And that's really a nice feature because once you're familiar with it, it becomes like a power reserve that you can easily interpret. We have a couple of different layers to the dial. You can see there's a combination of anthracite and orange accents. And I'm a big fan of orange on watches. The bridges are all matte finished, beveled and evacuated. So this really is a fully skeletonized movement. On the reverse side, you can see there's an elaborate click spring that acts to prevent the barrel from running backwards. And then on the reverse side, you can see all of these satinated wheels in the train. 23 joule movement, this goes by caliber 300. Some changes were made for this movement to better brace it against shock in a sports watch application. And the beat rate was increased to 28,800 vibrations per hour from lower beat rates used on other Angelus products, the higher beat rate making for greater shock tolerance and adjusted to five positions. And therefore that is the chronometer and high horology standard. That's exactly what you'd expect of a watch of this stature, and remember the rarity. The timepiece, of course, is super light and comes with a lovely factory rubber strap. You throw it on the wrist and it disappears like a second skin. I adore this thing, and actually, this is exactly the kind of watch that I would love to own. Fits underneath the cuff, so make no mistake, you can wear it with a dress ensemble, but the thing is, it's also a very visually punchy watch, so you can wear it casually without a second thought. And because La Joux Paré is part of the Citizen Group, then you know there will always be parts and service and money behind this brand to take care of your watch. And of course, Angelus only revived in 2015, and a very upscale brand Almost all of the watches they've produced, not all, but almost all the watches they've produced to this point have been tourbillon timepieces, so that's really considered to be integral to the brand and its image. In 2021, Alago Unzerne of East Germany and state of Saxony celebrated 21 years of its Longomatic Perpetual, which is part of the Saxonia family. This is the Longomatic Perpetual 20th Anniversary Edition. As you can see on the back, white gold, 50 pieces individually numbered and with a lovely blue galvanized solid sterling silver disc dial. We have white gold hands, date frame, numerals and indices. Perhaps surprisingly, for a dress watch, it is quite well loomed, including some of the calendar indications. And so we have these white gold features on a solid sterling silver dial that is cut using lathes, guilloche, traditional. The case is white gold, 38.5 millimeters in diameter, and it is a perpetual calendar, which means that you don't need to correct anything as long as it keeps running until the year 2100. Now, there's a lot to love at Longa. They use solid gold moon phase discs, which is something most other brands do not. They normally decorate a piece of brass or sapphire. This is actually 22 karat white gold, so little features that add to the richness. You can see there's a 24-hour display, so you know when not to use the pusher adjusters to adjust the calendar. This is the Saxomat three-quarter rotor automatic winder. Watch that seconds hand, not just hacking seconds, but zero reset, so you can easily set it to the second against a reference time. And then there is a pusher adjuster, the big one. Remember that. That adjusts everything in sync. Day, date, month, leap year phase, moon phase. So if you fall five days behind, wind it back up, set the correct time, and then press one, two, three, four, five, and everything resets correctly synchronized. The watch is now corrected. It's a brilliant system. Turn it all over. You have that Saxomat cal this is the L921 series, and of course, 46-hour automatic winding via the three-quarter rotor. Look at the richness. Let me see how close I can get here. But 21 karat solid gold rotor, and then the mass attached to that solid gold rotor is itself made of platinum. Ratchet wheel, black polished, bridges and plates, nickel copper zinc alloy known as German silver, or Michel, if we were in French-speaking Swiss watchmaking, but this is German silver here. With the copper giving it the golden hue, you could see snailing and solarization underneath the wheel, and then below that, two different concentric 
layers of engine turned perlage. The bevels are world class. You can see the anglage on the rotor, on the mass, on the bridges, perfectly rounded and mirrored, finished by hand. We have both fired blued screws and black polished screws, both. Why compromise, right? We have a little balance beaten away at 21,600 vibrations per hour with a black polished steel swan's neck fun adjustment mechanism. And then we have a steel cap to the escape wheel cock. And if you look carefully, we have a sharp interior angle where the bevels meet on that escape wheel cock, and that's executed in steel, not German silver. Very difficult to finish steel with that type of interior beveling. And again, 46 hour automatic winding power reserve, all of this adjusted in a chronometer style five positions. We have a matching full white gold deployment clasp, which is not a universal feature on longer watches. And being only 38 and a half millimeters in diameter, it's a watch that wears really easily, comfortably, compact, suitable for him, suitable for her, suitable for a cuff, but in a white metal with a blue dial, you could absolutely wear this casually. This is not some quaint silver dial, yellow gold timepiece, although Longa makes those, but this is one you can wear just about all the time. In my opinion, Debitun makes the finest watches in the world with the greatest variety and a fantastic back catalog. For years, I've been saying it. I reviewed my first Debitun watch in 2016, and it confirmed what I thought from a distance was that a company like Debitun with watches like these makes only Grail watches and nothing but. And this is a 2018 launch the DB25 Starry Varius. Now, some folks may say, Tim, Watchbox owns Dibitune. You're paid to say that. And I would say, go back to every video I shot before 2022. See what I said. I've been consistent. And this is emblematic of everything that Denis Flageolet at Dibitune does right. Grade 5 titanium case, 10 millimeters thick, 42 millimeters in diameter, two hands, modified breguet, rose gold, the dial, the case, the hands, the movement, all made in-house. They make every part of the watch. They make between 200 and 300 watches a year. Take a look at the center dial, black polished and fired blue grade five titanium. Take a look at the gold leaf used to create the distant features of the, Mil the Milky Way band. The Milky Way band here represented by two different things. N near celestial bodies, take a close look three-dimensional orbs of gold inserted into slots in the dial, distant celestial bodies, gold leaf, rose gold cabochon outboard of each of the blue on silver radially arrayed Roman numerals. Look at the depth of the dial too. It is a two-part dial, outer toroidal rim and then center disc, and the hands have even been rolled manually on mini rolling pins to follow the camber of the sapphire on the underside. Now on the reverse, this is why I say Debatune offers something for everyone. They don't make a whole lot of watches, but they do have great variety. This is very traditional. If you're coming from Moritz Grossman, if you're coming from Moser, if you're coming from F.P. Jorn, Kerry Voodelin, and very traditional classical independence, here you have a point of entry that is very much like those. But if you love Debatune technology, you just don't want to wear it on your sleeve, check out the reverse side. Now, we have the twin self-adjusting barrels. You cannot accidentally overwind them. A patented system to protect the watch, six days of power reserve. We have one, two, three shock protection springs. This is triple parachute shock protection. It's there both to avoid fracturing the balance staff, yes, but also to more rapidly recenter the balance staff and its pivot jewel to improve chronometry. Rose gold, double finished, beveled and satinated nameplate, solid gold fixed by screws, black polished screw heads, Cote de Batune across the base plate cap and the barrel bridge cap. Note beveling on both the barrel bridge and the cap atop the barrel bridge, as fine as anything you'll receive from Laurent Ferrier. And I've always cited Laurent Ferrier as one of the best in the industry. Solarization on the barrels. You can see that. This is fine finish. Avant garde tech, yes, but fine finish. Traditional. Mirrored. Take a look. The dark side of the stripes face outboard on each side. That's because the wheel that's used to lay down these stripes is reversed on each side to create mirrored Cote de Batune. That's why they're different than standard Cote de Genève. They mirror from side to side. We have mirrored beveling within the jewel sinks, and then we have a fired blue patented titanium balance with white gold masses in the rim to reduce the impact of 
aerodynamic drag, yes, but also the impact of temperature on timing. And you can see that the bridge for the balance has been black polished and continuously rounded. The springs for the triple pair chute, they've been fired blue, and then the center mount for the spring system atop the barrel bridge has been beveled on its side and black polished on its top. Finally, the hairspring, it's two pieces, manually shaped by Devatune and then clamped together for the shock resistance of an overcoil, but the flat profile, or I should say, for the concentric breathing properties of an overcoil, but for the shock resistance of a flat hairspring. An overcoil can sometimes get hung up on a regulator under conditions of shock. A flat hairspring will not do that. Also, a flat hairspring makes for a thinner movement, but because the mass of this has been centered by calculated pinning and shaping, it breathes concentrically like an overcoil, and though you can barely see it, there's also a Debatune-designed silicon escape wheel to reduce friction, improve power reserve, and reduce maintenance requirements. Now, this watch is about 49 millimeters lug-to-lug, -lug, but feather light, all in titanium and sapphire. Wears nicely on my wrist, and you can see it really is a good fit. I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference, maybe 14, if your wrist is like mine and more oval than round with a flatness across the top, and it'll easily slide underneath the dress cuff again. Debatune I just think makes the best of everything when it comes to simple watches, but also when it comes to very complicated watches. And so Denis Flageolet, who is co-founder and watchmaking chief of Debatune, has different ideas about how to do things. He wants the best in ergonomics, so he created the variable geometry spring-loaded floating lugs. He wanted a chronograph that was easy to read and also versatile, so he decided on the Maxi Chrono system, first debuted on the DB21 back in 2006. The idea is that you have your Breguet-style skeletonized blackened hour and minute hands at center, but then you also have three coaxial chronograph hands. So you have your chronograph seconds right here, you have radial chronograph minutes like an old Le Mania, and so you can see the chronograph minutes go up to 60, not a 30-minute chronograph register, but 60 full. That's the gold hand right here. And then you have, for chronograph hours at center, this dished ring in 24-hour format, so you get a full day duration on the chronograph hour register. Now this is a mono pusher, so when you stop and reset, everything resets, and then listen. Super sharp actuation. And the whole thing is controlled by no fewer than three clutches and three separate column wheels. You can see the finishing quality. The bridges have been fully skeletonized, interior beveled, and black polished across their top. Manual wind, five-day power reserve. Here's another one of Denis' signature balances here, attempting to reduce the impact of aerodynamics on the balance, but putting as much of the mass in a tapered white gold rim as possible. Since there are no bolts floating in the free airstream, this maximizes aerodynamic efficiency, and we have a wheel internally that's made of punched out and skeletonized silicon. Also, uh, because we have as much of the mass in the rim as possible, thanks to that sliver of white gold, it is more resistant to shock, and this beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour with a full bridge structure, and then that maximized rim mass, so this is a very shock-resistant watch. Now, you get what's basically a vertical clutch for chronograph seconds, so when it starts up, it does so without any jump or stagger. Then there's an oscillating pinion engagement for the minutes, less play than a conventional lateral clutch, so the minutes hand starts without jump or stagger, and then a traditional, traditionally beautiful full lateral clutch engages the hours. Uh, everything is super precise, and there's no loss of balance amplitude when running the chronograph with this watch. You can see just how finely finished it is, and absolutely nothing is left to chance in terms of design, engineering, finish, or detailing, as the dial is straightforward to read. Once you realize that all three chronograph registers are at center, it's super simple. The numerals in white gold are blackened applique Arabic, and then we have blackened hour or hour and minute hands. And we have zirconium scratch resistant floating lugs. The watch is 45.6 millimeters in diameter in rose gold, but make no mistake, because the geometry of the lugs is able to change, even on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this nearly 46 millimeter watch wears very easily. And this model came out in 2014. Only a few dozen were ever constructed, so rarity is assured. And as you can see, it's actually fairly thin and it will fit underneath the dress cuff. This is the DB28 Maxi Chrono. If you like the watches you saw today, 
even if you just want to ask questions, reach out to me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com.